Hey everyone, my name is Matt, and today I'm going to present our work on the GEM5 GPU Accuracy Profiler, or GAP. And this is work that was done in collaboration with Charlie Jamison, Anuska Chandra Shekhar, and Ian McDougall at the University of Wisconsin. Uh, but before I get into the details, I do want to apologize that I'm not there to present in person. There was a number of canceled flights and so on that uh, prevented that from happening, and so I'm presenting virtually instead, but I do apologize. Ultimately, uh, in recent years, my group, including the three I mentioned on the previous slide, what we've been working on is we've been working on enhancing the existing support to run CPU-GPU experiments in GEM5, which many of you will likely recall. The most recent major update on that was by uh, AMD Research, especially Tony Gutierrez uh, at HPCA 2018, where they introduced the new GEM5 GPU support that ran with uh, you know, the cycle level execution driven model using AMD's Rockham stack. Uh, and in recent years, my students and I have been working on updating this to run more modern versions of the Rockham stack, like version 4.0, uh, as well as simulating a number of additional applications. As part of this process, though, one of the things we noticed was uh, that there was cases where we weren't really getting the amount of parallelism we expected. And when we started investigating, one of the reasons behind this that we found was that the public model of Gem5's GPU uh, support was doing very simple dependence tracking that only allowed one wavefront per CU to run at a time, which uh, if you know anything about GPUs, you'll know is not super realistic because uh, you know in a real GPU, we'll try to run many things in parallel, many wavefronts in parallel, on a compute unit at a given time, uh, assuming sufficient resources are available. And so what we started to do is to add support for a dynamic register allocator that, instead of statically allocating one wavefront per CU at a time, would alloc schedule additional wavefronts concurrently per CU, assuming there were enough resources, for example, registers available. And this meant that we could potentially use up to all of the wavefront slots on a given CU, depending on those resource requirements. Um, but of course, this is a relatively simple model. There is you know, recent literature talking about much more complicated, higher performance designs. But intuitively, you would expect with this approach that we would get better accuracy relative to real systems than what we were able to get before. Unfortunately, though, when we started examining the behavior of this uh, you know, scheduler across a number of applications, so the y-axis here is normalized speed up, versus the blue static schedule allocator. And the orange is our new dynamic register allocator. And on the x-axis, we examine this across a number of different applications. Um, I'm not gonna go through each one of them in detail, but the bottom line is, although yes, the dynamic register allocator helped in some cases up to three X, for example, with backward the backward passive batch normalization, there are also other cases where it hurt performance by up to 50% which is not very intuitive. Um, and overall, the GeoMean speedup for our dynamic register allocator was that it was 6% worse than this simple static scheme, which again is not logically what we would expect to see. So we started digging further and we found that there was also issues with the way that dependencies were being tracked, where it could be improved and tracked at a, a finer granularity to handle this additional parallelism that our new register allocator was uh, providing. And so the net result was that now we had many more stalls. And, you know, of course, in hindsight, it meant that optimizing the register allocator in, a in isolation was not sufficient. Um, you know, unfortunately, proprietary GPU dependence checking solutions uh, are not known, though. So what we did is we took a look at you know, the recent literature and patents and so on, and we saw that using a relatively simple in-order scoreboard like the one shown here um, could get much better uh, efficiency and handle this dependence tracking. And our results showed that we could get up to a 44% reduction in stalls by doing this. So of course, this meant that now our dynamic register allocator was helping and we were getting more realistic results relative to real hardware. But it also meant that, you know, this was a very point-based solution. We tried to optimize something. It didn't work. We had to investigate, find, you know, more changes to make to help. Um, and while that was good, it, it's not scalable. And so what we really need here is 
a standardized approach for evaluating all the different knobs and buttons that we might tweak when running GPU simulations in Gem 5. And so that's what motivated the work that we're, I'm presenting today, which again is the Gem 5 GPU Accuracy Profiler, or GAP. And the way that GAP works is it takes in both metrics that we want to profile, for example, L2 hits or misses, and the application or applications that we want to run on the real GPU and in Gem 5, as well as the configuration for Gem 5. And what GAP will do then is it'll run each application on the real GPU and in Gem 5, uh, and it'll produce a number of metrics or stats that come from those, and GAP will then go through and match those corresponding metrics and generate a per application comparison file, which we can then use to iteratively refine the GPU model by identifying which metrics are significantly divergent. So to run GAP, uh, you really need three things. You first need the executables that you want to run and their input args. And again, these are going to be run both in Gem5 and on a real GPU. Uh, second, we need to tell Gem5 what its input args are. And then finally, we need to know what metrics we want to collect from the real GPU and Gem5. And so the way that we broke this down for GAP is the first two uh, come from a configuration input file. And the last one, we're using separate metri a separate metrics input file. And given this, we can then uh, run GAP on the command line using Python. To give you an idea, though, we ran some of these experiments uh, against a Vega 20 GPU that we'd modeled in Gem 5, uh, as well as had in our lab. Um, and so the, the configuration file, first to specify what benchmarks to run, you'll note that we have a in uh, brackets and executables tag. And below it, you'll see that there's a list of different benchmarks that we want to run. So in this case, we're running Square from Gem5 Resources, as well as the popular uh, Babel Stream uh, you know, benchmark to try and see what the max bandwidth is. You also might uh, note that any input args we want for the applications need to be included here. Now that we've done that, the next thing we need to do in the configuration file is tell this gem5 its information. So for example, where gem5 is located, what the output directory should be, if we're using a Docker, where is it, what uh, you know script should we use for gem5's configuration file, any flags that we want on the command line, for example, to specify the number of compute units to model, and then finally, the metrics that we want the profiler, uh, which AMD calls RockProf, to track. Uh, and so the, that last line takes in this metrics input file I mentioned a couple slides ago, and an example of one of those is shown here. So you'll note that it has four lines, each of which starts with this PMC uh, designator. And what PMC is essentially doing is it's telling the AMD's RockProf profiler, which hardware counters you want to collect um, per run. So each line where there's a PMC indicates that the profiler needs to run the application another time. And the reason why we might need multiple lines is sometimes these metrics are using the same underlying hardware counters on the real GPU. Uh, and so we have to, of course, run it a couple times to get the different metrics that we might need. Um, and so there was a little bit of a trial and error process to figuring out which one of these metrics could be run at the same time. But in GAP, what we've done is tried to automate that as much as possible and identify which ones uh, can't be run simultaneously. All right, so given all of that, this uh, GAP will then produce an output file per application. So here, for example, is the output that it produces for Square in a CSV format to make it easy to graph. Uh, I'm not going to go through each of the stats here, but the key point I want to make is there's five columns here. Metric, the measurement from the rock profiler, the measurement from Gem5, and then the absolute difference and percent difference for each metric. But I think it's much easier to look at this graphically. Um, so on the y-axis here, I have the percent difference, and on the x-axis, I have each of those different stats that we gathered uh, from the previous slide. And some of them are zero or very close to zero, which indicates that RockProf and Gem5 are matching uh, very closely for those. Uh, and in particular, it seems like things like vector ALU statistics are 
very well correlated, uh, as well as uh, not just the utilization, but also instructions and things like that are, are very well correlated or almost perfectly correlated. However, the memory subsystem exhibits very different behavior. So the, the number of flat uh, vector memory instructions, the number of hits and misses at the L2, which AMD calls the TCC, are very different from one another um, relative to between Gem 5 and the real GPU. And this indicates that we should probably spend some time finding ways to optimize the memory subsystem to be more representative of the real uh, GPU. Uh, but to do that, really what we're going to need, you know, Square is a relatively simple application, but it doesn't tell us a lot about what's going on in the memory subsystem. So what we need is a way to isolate stats for these specific components. And so that's what uh, my students and I have been spending our time recently on, is developing a series of micro benchmarks that can isolate the behavior of these different components with the goal then to pass them into GAP to use to refine things like latencies and bandwidths and so on and so forth at the different levels of our memory hierarchy. And so we've written a number of tests in handwritten uh, assembly uh, in the GPU HIP programming language that allow us to measure different things like the L1, I, and D cache size or latency or even bandwidth, uh, as well as similar metrics for other uh, memories in the system including uh, the maximum flops and arithmetic latency for some of the operations that run in our system. Uh, and so ultimately the goal with all of this is to try and improve our uh, accuracy of the GPU model in Gem 5, or close the gap if you will, uh, because having validated models in our simulators is very important. We want to believe, we want to have some comfort or intuition that changes we make are going to be representative of what runs on real systems. But we observed that that was not always the case with these existing solutions. And while we can go through and fix them one at a time, doing point solutions is pretty inefficient and, you know, error prone, to be honest. And so that's what led us to develop GAP, which allows us to more automatically go through and look at different uh, components and how they behave. Uh, and what the results show thus far is that things like the memory subsystem are where we seem, seemingly need to spend the most time and attention, uh, you know, tweaking to make our GPU models relatively more accurate. But although we've focused on the GPU model, I think GAP is potentially applicable to a wide variety of other components in Gem 5 as well, which I'd love to talk to you all about, uh, you know, I guess via email since I'm presenting remotely, but if people are interested, let me know. But ultimately, uh, our goals with uh, GAP and where we're going with this is we're using micro bench these micro benchmarks we developed to tune the GPU model to reduce the minimum absolute error for each of these different components. And as we make those improvements, we're going to release both GAP itself, but also the changes that we make to help refine the model. And my long-term hope for GAP is that we can integrate it into the regressions that we run in Gem 5 to actually do real performance regression testing, such that when we check in new changes, we can make sure that they're not significantly hurting the accuracy relative to real systems, which I think would be a major advance in, uh, you know, in the way that we do regressions right now, which are mostly focused on correctness and making sure things pass. Um, but thanks for listening. Uh, what I'm going to do since I'm not there in person to answer questions is I'm just going to briefly flash some frequently asked questions that I anticipated people might want to discuss on the slide, on the screen so that people might pause their browser to, to look at. Um, but if there's anything here that I didn't answer on these slides or you want to discuss further, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I put my email back up on the screen and thanks for listening.